Ah. Uh, there's a place in your house where it's cool to chill, get some me time, or even cook a meal. It's your kitchen mofo, ain't no time to slack, so just grab yourself a penny and let's work that ass. If you're scared of this place, ain't no need to bother, just lay down your weapons and pick up another. Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome to my Virgin Kitchen. Today we are doing a recipe that I've just sort of come up with in the car, like literally about an hour ago, and I don't know what I'm going to call it, but you'll probably be able to read it up there, or you probably watched it already in the title of the video. So right now, you know more than I do about this recipe. We're just going to put it together, see if it works, and I'm going to tell you at the end whether it's even worth you making it. Let's go for it. Okay guys, so basically I had this idea of making like a burger sort of thing, but without the bat, okay? So what we're going to do, first of all, is get ourselves a sheet of, uh, that's tin foil. Kind of looks a bit futuristic. It's just tin foil. I can't disguise it as anything else. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is get some bacon, like this, or bacon strips if you're an Epic Mealtime fan. So I'm just going to get around about four of them for now and just put them. Obviously, you've got a fat end and a thin end, or if you've got rashes, that's all good. I'm just going to put them like this. So just get them along there. Okay, so that is my base bit done. And the next bit is going to be mushroom. Okay, just bear with me. Okay, so with the mushrooms, we've got these massive, gigantic ones. I think in a former life, I was a farmer because I was just addicted to these massive mushrooms for some reason. You know, they're kind of uh, weird looking because they look like toadstools or um, like a big sombrero or something from Lord of the Rings. I don't know. But they also, the other good thing about it is, you know, the skin on them? You know when you get button mushrooms, they're really hard to peel off? These ones, let's just watch this. It just comes off so easy, like that. So peel your mushrooms, trim your stalk down a little bit, get that rough bit off there, wash them, and just leave them on their hole. Yeah. Okay, so we've got our giant mushroom here, it's been washed and peeled, so we're just gonna plonk that in the middle of our bacon like that. What we're gonna do now is give it a little bit of a cheesy layer. Uh-huh. Okay guys, so you'll see there I've got some parmesan. All I'm doing is putting around about two teaspoons of it just around the rim of the mushroom, like so. And we're gonna put some more grated mozzarella on top. Cheese-tastic. Okay, so I'm only putting on a teeny bit of the mozzarella cheese, probably about a tablespoon max, just to get it there all nice and flush, because now we're gonna combine mushroom with pineapple. Okay, so if you can get a fresh pineapple, it's even better, but all I'm doing is taking one straight out of the tin, the ring, like so, and hopefully it's gonna fit a fairly similar shape to the mushroom like that, to sit it straight on top. And now I'm gonna put a teeny bit more cheese on top of it. cha -ching! Okay, so you see that little hole in the middle there? I'm gonna be a little bit specific here and just fill that bit just with Parmesan like that, and then I'm gonna top it in the mozzarella. Specific. Okay, so a teeny bit of mozzarella on the top. Please note with the pineapple as well, I didn't drain it, okay? I want a teeny bit of that natural sweetness from the pineapple in there. Yeah, that's, that's what I want, but it's up to you, remember that. Chicken is going on top now, which I flattened earlier. Brilliant. Okay, Koki, this is a chicken breast, which I flattened and bashed it down in a little plastic bag. You've seen me do that loads of times. Trimmed around a little bit of the excess to get a fairly sort of circular shape. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna wash your hands after, after touching the chicken, by the way, just, just sit it on top of the mushroom, the pineapple, and the cheese, like so, and that, is a funky stack right there. Now, if you want now, you can maybe season it, you add some more stuff to it. I'm gonna put a teeny bit more cheese and a bit of black pepper, up to you. Some more bacon on the top and roll it up. It's getting good. Just hope it tastes all right. Okay, so a teeny bit more cheese on top. Doesn't matter if it scatters a little bit over the bacon, we're gonna roll that all up in there. Black pepper on top, so where is my red ball crusher? Here he is. Teeny bit, not too much. Brilliant. Now, bacon draped over, and we pull it all up. My hands are going like this. Okay, so this is gonna be the fiddly bit. First thing you wanna do, we're gonna drape it with bacon, obviously, but if we pull up these ends first of all so we know exactly where we need to drape it, the aim is to try and cover it all with bacon if we can. So I'm just gonna pull these up first of all and we'll see where we are. Just tuck them into that middle layer bit there. They should hold a little bit, let's see. Right, that's holding. So if I tuck up the other sides and drape the bacon over the top, let's see what it turns out like. Okay, cool, just to show you, we're halfway there, and the bacon is sort of like doing that, it's grasping it, so I've got to drape it over the top to meet the sides, and these bits here, if you make an incision, and you can fold them up too, kind of like wrapping a big Christmas present. Yeah. Okay, there we go then, guys, that is it, it's looking like a funky cocoon thing, almost like a big brain. Um, so all I'm gonna do is, uh, yeah, just wrap it in my foil now, I'm gonna bring one side over, uh, tuck that in a little bit, bring the other side over, like so, and just sort of work it round, okay? I'm not very good at wrapping Christmas presents, but you'll get the idea, make it into a big, ball foil bomb thing and now i'm going to make another one of these so if you're making it just for yourself that's it that's it right here then guys i've made a second one and cha ching it does look now like something that nasa might give to their astronauts you know they're all lined up ready to go into space and they're like there you go there is your space food i don't know maybe 
maybe not. So we're gonna keep this nice and simple and easy. Alongside that, we're gonna serve some broccoli, which is just in that bowl right here. We put that on in the saucepan right at the end. But also, we're gonna do some uh, chips, slash wedges, slash fries. Some of you all call it different stuff. You see me making before. All I've done already is peel my potatoes, wash them, cut them into wedges, like so. And they're around a tea towel because I've patted them dry, so we've got all that starch off, okay? We don't want that on there. What we're gonna do is mix that with a tablespoon of rosemary, one lemon that's been zested, about 25 mils of lemon juice, that's actually straight from the lemon. Don't taste it, you'd be like this. Uh, a little bit of oil, and maybe some black pepper just to season it. So we're gonna mix that all together in a bowl, shove them in the oven at the same time as our unidentified flying food, because I don't know what it's called right now, and uh, we'll see what it tastes like. Okay, I might as well show you this, guys, but it was fairly basic, wasn't it? I'm just gonna pour out the tea towel, so we've got our funky wedges there. There's actually quite a lot there. That was four large potatoes, if you're interested. Nice load of wedges, because whenever I make these, Mrs. Barry loves the recipe, and uh, she's just crying out for more with her being pregnant right now. And by the way, right now is her due date, and uh, still no baby. For all of you that have been asking, still no baby. I hope it is a baby, and she just hasn't put on a lot of weight, but I didn't just say that. Okay, cool, so wedges are there. Let's get in some of this oil. Nice big glug, maybe like two tablespoons of that in there. You can add more if you want. Just get it coated first of all. It's gonna act as a sort of gluey thing. What we've got is our lemon juice as well to further lubricate it. It's gonna give it that lemon kick. That zing when you bite into it, you're gonna go like, ooh, ooh. That's the noise I want you to make, ooh. Please, okay. So, the rosemary, taking off the stalks and the lemon zest, push, push that all in. Wow, look at me with my wooden spoon. How cool is that? Right, and that goes for now with a teeny bit of black pepper, Ta -ta. loving it. Just a teeny bit of that there. Stir it all through. Get it all nice and coated. I want it all hugging each other. I want it dancing in there. Dance. Dance. Okay, they're nice and stirred through, but I'm gonna get my roasting tray there. I don't need to put any more olive oil in it because they're already dressed in it like that. So just get them in there, scatter them all around, make sure there's no rosemary hiding, just going, I don't want to be in there. Get it in there. It wants to be in there really. It's just nervous. It's camera shy. Okay. In it goes, get it right in there. So we're gonna preheat our oven now and the temperatures will be on the screen below you, right here, okay? And we're just gonna shove it all in together. And then the um, broccoli just stays to the end. Okay, so we're gonna cook the fries slash chips slash wedges for 35 minutes. Um, about halfway through, get like a spatter in there or some sort of big spoon and just stir them around a little bit just to get it all nice and curried. Maybe spin it around the other side, rotate it like that. It's all good. So, in that goes. I'm gonna put that on the bottom shelf first of all. And I'm gonna prioritize the uh, NASA style space food. Let's get that in there. Again, that's gonna go there for around that same time, 35 minutes or so. It's gonna all heat through. You wanna make sure that chicken is all cooked in there. So hopefully the foil will reflect that. All the heat is gonna go in there. It's gonna be like pow, 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 pow. Yeah. Right, hey then guys, so we've got about 10 minutes left and I put the pan of water on to boil. It's slowly getting there, I'm not in any particular rush. The broccoli is sat there, we're gonna dunk that in there in just a teeny bit. It smells so lemony in here from those chips slash wedges slash fries, whatever you wanna call it. And the bacon thing, I can't wait to see what that turns out like. I'm kind of excited. Right here then guys, that's been 10 minutes in that time I have cooked my broccoli. You do not need me to show you how to make broccoli. I've done it loads of times before, but there we go. It's just sat there for your viewing pleasure and reference. Okay, more importantly, chips slash fries slash wedges are there. Nice color to them, brown around the edge, not all the way through because you are not making like overly done roast potatoes. You do not want that, but the smell, can you smell that? It is smelling good. The lemon and rosemary scent, boom, they will taste good. And also, our massive bacony ball things, which I haven't named right now, as you know, are there. Let's see what it's like. Okay, so I've got myself a plate, but first of all, we need to unwrap our bacon ball thing. Yeah. Right, guys, I'm just unwrapping the foil. Oh my goodness. It's all cooked through. That's a good sign right there, my friends. I'm gonna scoop that out with a fish slice now, straight on top of there, and then we'll add some stuff around it. Let's see if this works. cha -ching. Okay, here it goes. It looks like a massive brain, but hopefully it'll be okay. I'm just gonna plonk it in the middle, and that is piping hot, my friends, right there. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna put the wedges and the broccoli all around it and then we're just gonna eat it. Okay, the boring bit is done. Our broccoli is on there and also our chips slash fries slash wedges, which have got these amazing little burnt bits of rosemary, which is just oozing with flavors. They're crisp if you end up eating them. Don't worry about it, it's gonna taste good, all fusion. So, one thing you might have is a teeny bit of juice left in your foil pack, okay? Maybe just pour a teeny bit of that on the top like that, okay, just on top of it, and finish it with a little bit of Parmesan chose, okay? Just sprinkle that on top of your bomb, and that, my friends, Let's call it a bomb. Yeah, let's call it a bomb. Bacon, Barry's bacon bomb. Yes, it's ready. Right, here we go then folks. I'm gonna try and cut this. I'm using an extra sharp knife, obviously with the bacon being there. I'm just gonna cut right down the middle of it. Oh my goodness. 
I'm gonna have to just like show you this right now. Hang on a sec. Okay, so extreme close up, you've got your mushroom down there, the pineapple on top, the chicken, the cheese fusing it all together, and that bacon has made a wicked shield. Um, I'm gonna eat it now, I'm kinda keen to. Okay folks, I've got myself a little fork of it, and to be honest, for a first attempt and creation idea, that's not too bad. I think maybe next time I'll put some rosemary in with the like bacon bit as well, Barry's bacon bomb thing, is that what I called it? I can't remember. Anyhow, it's time to eat it, and this looks like a microphone. Ha <laughs> Right, okay. Oh my god. Mmm, that is good. They've got that sweetness of the pineapple in there. And it's similar with the pineapple and the ham, like that sort of gammon thing. And the chicken jumping in, and the cheese. Oh my god. That is really good. Let's just try a lemon chip slash wedge slash fry. Mmm. Really good. So, not a bad creation that. Have a go for yourself. Let me know how you get on. Put your own twist on it. And I'll see you again next time.